This example shows a common misinterpretation of a model with an interaction term, or in general, a nonlinear term. Uh, so again, the nice thing with the linear and variables models is that they're relatively simple to interpret, but they're not that realistic. Conversely, models like this offer more realistic features, but they can be uh, misinterpreted. So in this particular case, we're looking at the relationship between wage and experience and education, and there's an interaction term in our model between experience and education, which in this example we'll interpret as allowing the uh, education to influence the slope of wage with respect to experience. So if we were to look at this estimated model, so imagine we had a data set and we ran it and uh, ran OLS and these were the estimates we got. If we said, you know, I don't really understand these interaction terms, maybe I should just ignore it and look at the term I do understand over here, we might see that negative 15 coefficient on x1 and say, oh, there's actually a negative relationship between wage and experience. Or in other words, as experience increases, uh, that's associated with a decrease in wage. So this might seem a bit unintuitive because it's not true. And the reason is we've just ignored this uh, interaction term, which if we rewrite this model, we can write it as having a slope with respect to x1 of the negative 15 from over here, from the uh, beta hat 1 part. But then also 2 times x2 from the interaction term. Uh, so you can see in general, this would be uh, beta hat 1 plus beta hat 3 times x2. So now we can see whether or not that slope is positive will depend on the years of education that we are looking at. In particular, using the numbers in the example, the slope will be positive if 2x2 is uh, greater than 15. So our slope with respect to x1, negative 15, plus 2x2, and so that'll be weekly positive when, uh, in other words, x2, just rearranging, so moving the 15 to the other side and then dividing by 2. Uh, x2 is greater than or equal to 15. divided by 2, which is 7.5. So if you imagine we have a data set where maybe uh, the lowest education level in the data set is 10 years of education, uh, then that would mean everybody has x2 above that threshold. 
In other words, the slope with respect to x1 would be positive for all individuals in our data set. So, for example, if x2 is always at least 10, then uh, in particular our slope with respect to x1 is always at least 5. So even though we have this negative slope on x1 in the linear term, that doesn't tell the whole story. We still need to look at the interaction term to figure out the relationship between y and x1.